compile that into the application. So now that those are in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to discuss how all this works. So we still have our native applications. And I'm going to start with the Android one. So under main activity, what we have is we have a Xamarin forms .forms .init. This is what you have to do to actually initialize Xamarin forms. And then you also have to set the page. So here what we're doing is we're doing app.getMainPage. And get main page points to your portable class library. And it's a static method called get main page. And it implements a content page. And all it does is it adds a label, sets some text, sets some vertical options, and some horizontal options. OK, so that, that's the code that we got from the template when we first created this project. So we're starting with uh, that content page is where we're, it's just kind of the starting point. But we'll, we'll make those changes later, right? Exactly, exactly. So that's just our starting point. And then on iOS, we do uh, the same thing as done. So forms.init and app.getMainPage. But here, what it does is it calls createViewController. So createViewController is a uh, extension method specific to iOS only. And if you open up the Windows side on mainpage.xaml, it has its own called convert page to UI element. So that is what is going to set its content for the main page.xaml, and it's going to convert it, and it's specific to Windows Phone. So it's an extension method that we have there. So I'm going to compile this application. You see there it's going to compile for all three platforms. OK, so it's, it's now, it's, you're having it build all three projects right now. Uh, even though we've, you know, got, we've got this one solution, it's going to build a portable class library. It's going to link that in to the other three projects, and we're building all three in Visual Studio right now. Exactly, exactly. All three are now are now built. One thing I'm going to add in here is I'm going to add an icon because the default template doesn't actually set the icon, so I'm going to add it here. And you're setting that in the in the Android, Android project. application. Okay. Yeah. So at and this is how you set your activity icon in Android. Okay. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna compile again. It should just compile the Android one. All right. And there it goes. And I'm gonna set the startup project to Windows Phone. And I'm going to run it on the emulator. All right, so it deploys the application, and we see Hello Forms. You see Hello Forms there. I'm going to stop that one. And I'm going to set the iOS as Startup Project. And I'm going to change this to iPhone and to go to my iPod Touch on my Mac. All right. So that's going to compile it up, send it across the wire to your Mac, and and then your Mac is going to uh, run that in the simulator. Yeah, it's going to run it there. There's Hello Forms, so the same thing. And then we're going to get the same thing on Android. And, and so that so so that uh, Hello Forms is all coming from that app.cs. We're using that all from that portable class library, right? Exactly. So that is all being rendered from here. So you know this is the first way to uh, to share our page. So now if we want to create a new page, I'm going to add a folder here called Pages just so we can structure this. I'm going to add a class called Main Page, and then I'm going to replace this with. this right here. So here, we're creating a content page, and we're just setting a label where we have a button, and we wire up the button click event, and we want to set the label to the current day time. Uh, we add a stack layout, and we put the button and the, the label within the stack layout, and we set the content page, the content property to the layout, and we just give it a padding of 15. So this you could, you could create in XAML also, but Currently, there is no XAML designer 
Uh, so there is no IntelliSense within Visual Studio. So I find it more comfortable actually building everything out through code at this point. Uh, hopefully one day we'll get a designer within Visual Studio. Right, so this is this is because the Xamarin.forms was just announced in May, so yep. this that, that may be something that follows along I think so. I think so. I think they're doing quite a few uh, quite a few pushes out there in terms of updates to Xamarin Forms. Uh, so I, th I think it's it's still in its infancy at this point, but definitely usable and extendable. So I'm going to run this. Let's just run it on the iPod here. I'm going to clean the solution. And that is because Android is set to the startup project. So I'm going to set it to iOS, that error there. All right. So again, we're building that. We've, we've just added a main page to this, right? Yes. OK. So that main page then will run on your iOS? Yeah. So one thing I did forget is actually this. So it's actually running now, but it's going to still say hello forms. Return a new main page. And then this will actually return our main page. So right here, I'm going to set the iPhone. It's set as a startup project. I'm going to start it. All right, so with that main page then, now we've written the code, uh, we can deploy it to all three devices. And that's going to copy it over again to, to your iPhone. Yeah, so right now it's copying it over. Starting the, the debug session. And there it is. There it is there. So we're going to click. We get our functionality there. So now I'm going to stop it. And then I'm going to set the Windows Phone to the startup project. I'm going to switch this to any CPU, and I'm going to run this on the Windows Phone emulator. All right, great. So there you see, we have the same code, and everything is running as expected. And the same thing will happen on the Android, uh, but we'll show Android in a, in a future demo. So one of the things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to update uh, some NuGet packages. So we're going to update these and then switch back into the PowerPoint. All right, so we're going to spend some time talking about portable class libraries. And uh, those portable class libraries is another way that we're sharing code. So in our iOS application, uh, when, when we built out this new Xamarin.Forms, it created this portable class library for us. And that portable class library could be in C Sharp, it could be in Visual Basic, um, with, with Xamarin, we're, we're probably going to want to stick with C-sharp since that's where we're, where we're at. Um, but this is a great way to create that DLL that's going to be uh, the application logic that we have. And we're going to share that uh, between our projects. And it's, it's not really the same as a shared project where we're linking the code, but we're actually compiling a DLL and building that DLL across into our iOS and Android and, and Windows Phone applications. Uh, this is all about managed code. Uh, we're creating that single code base for Windows, for Silverlight, uh, for Windows Phone. And all we're doing is that shared assembly. Um, when we go and build that, um, we are actually, when we go in and create one, uh, in Visual Studio, we're given a, uh, we select a class library that's portable, we give it a name. And when Visual Studio comes up, it will ask us, well, what targets, what frameworks do we want to target? And so here in this uh, picture, we're, we're targeting the .NET framework, we're targeting Windows 8, Windows Phone Silverlight, uh, Windows Phone 8.1, and then Xamarin, Xamarin Android and Xamarin iOS. What this is doing is it's narrowing the scope of what's available to our application when we build it, and that gives us the ability to whatever code goes in this is something that's shared across all of the applications. So there are certain things that, that we can't do on all of the platforms, and those are going to be things that are uh, platform-specific items like storage. We're not going to be able to do file I.O. access uh, the same across platforms, so that won't go into our portable class library. Uh, the same thing goes with alerts or message boxes. Um, and, and we're actually going to build out here in our demo uh, the idea behind the GPS. Uh, because the GPS is a little bit different from device to device, 
uh, we're going to take that and we'll create some pieces of that in our portable class library, but we're not actually going to be able to have that code in our portable class library. Uh, we'll have specific implementations of that in our applications as we move forward. Um, so when it gets to code sharing, we're going to uh, look at using what's the, called the model view view model pattern. We're going to look at some inversion of control and some dependency injection. Yep, Mark? and and that's where um, the dependency injection is basically where we're going to be able to call platform specific code. Like you said, we're going to be able to call the GPS functionality. So here we have a, a quick diagram showing uh, every platform has to register a concrete type uh, in, inside a locator. So it's a uh, it's using a locator pattern. Uh, uh, included with MVVM and inversion of control. Uh, and then the PCL uh, within the view model is going to go in and it's going to find those types if it's needed. So with uh, dependency injection, we use dependency injection with MVVM Lite. And it's going to go in and if it's in the constructor, uh, it's going to call and try to find those types and pass it into the constructor uh, when we uh, call for the view model. So here's... Uh, the GPS services. So with the GPS, uh, we're going to define an interface, and it's just going to have one method called get location, and we're going to make it async. And then here's the implementation for iOS. It's it's limited in in the slide, but we'll show you the full implementation. So for iOS, you create a CL location manager. Uh, you you implement the get location method from the interface, uh, and you call manager .start updating, and within there we run a task to wait for the events when we actually get back a location and then we return that location. And then what you have to do is you have to register those, uh, those services, so the location service, and then the view model you also register. And the view model has a constructor that takes uh, uh, iGPS service as a parameter and we want to save that parameter within, uh, within our view model. Okay, so this view model is what, what is in our portable class library and we're actually going to use this iGPS service that's going to reach into the application-specific implementation of the GPS service. Exactly. So it's going to uh, into the platform-specific from iOS, Android, and Windows. All right. So when we get instance, uh, when we want to grab the view model, uh, what it'll do, uh, the, we're going to be using MVVM Lite. Uh, and what it'll do is it'll use reflection to actually construct the view model, and it'll uh, use dependency injection to inject uh, the iGPS locator uh, location service. So let's actually go in there and implement some of that. We'll be implementing MVVM Lite. Uh, some dependency injection, and we're actually going to implement the entire Heritage Properties app, the same one that we did uh, without Xamarin Forms in our, uh, and this time using Xamarin Forms. All right. So I'm going to swap over to Visual Studio, and here I set it up. Uh, we're going to install MVVM Light li uh, MVVM Light libraries, the PCL version, into all our projects. So I'm going to click Install. I'm going to select all our projects and I'm going to click OK. So that is going to go, it's going to, you know, using NuGet, if you're familiar with NuGet uh, or if you've used M MVVM Lite, um, we're using that. It's going to download, install it to all the platforms, and then we're going to go from there. So you see a nice green checkbox, and then we're good, going to be good to go. So from here, we're going to copy all these uh, folders. So we've pre-built some folders or some files, and we're just going to copy it into our PCL. And I'm going to say yes, apply to all, and I'm just going to overwrite everything. So I'm going to close these off and walk through uh, what we're doing here. So we're going to look at data.kml. And we want to make sure, again, it's the same KML file that we've had uh, in the other projects, but we want to make sure it is set to embedded resource. So before we had two copies of the data.kml file because we had to create it as an Android resource and as an iOS resource. Now because we have this portable class library, we're going to compile that into that DLL and it will be shareable across all three platforms. Exactly. So it's now going to be embedded within the DLL, and we'll be able to, to leverage that. 
So some of the other things we have are we have the interface. So here's our interface that we have, um, you know, that we saw in, this, in the slide deck. Uh, we have our models, so still the same heritage property models from the past uh, to modules. We've added something called location. So every platform defines their own location object model. So we've kind of uh, created a, our own here so we could pass across the different platforms and back into our PCL. All right, great. We have a details page, right now it's empty, and a main page uh, that we overwrote from the past. Uh, right now it's empty. Our services is essentially the same thing, except we are doing this to load the, uh, uh, the data.kml file. So we grab the assembly, get manifest resource stream, and pass it in what the, the full name, including the, uh, the directory, is of the file. And then it just goes in and it loads everything as usual. So that is exactly the same code from the past, other than this piece right here. So with that, we should be able to compile. So I'm just going to do a quick build. And... All right, so that resource is pulling it out of the assembly. That's something that uh, is because it's now compiled into the assembly, that's how we're going to read it back out? Exactly.